Hello and welcome to the ladies room. Today my guest is Paul Gartside and he is one of the people, as we all are, um, incredibly worried about climate uh, control. And there are groups forming all over the country now called Carbon Crews. And Paul is a neighbor of my wonderful director, Geraldine Lewandowski. And Geraldine, uh, as we all are, is involved with um, doing what we can to help with climate change. So, Paul, you are involved with something called Carbon Crews, mm -hmm. and you run a Carbon Crew? I guide a Carbon Crew currently, yes. Uh-huh. And where is this Carbon Crew? Well, it's actually uh, it's on Zoom, the one that I'm running right now. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Carbon Crew came out of the uh, Drawdown East End organization. We had the Drawdown people here right. two years ago, so well, the, before COVID, actually. Right. They say two years ago, but meanwhile, <laughs> we lost those two years. So. Right. Well, they put on big festivals through the Southampton Arts Center. They did one at the beginning of this year, too. Uh -huh. And they're all about uh, scientifically based, pro uh, providing scientifically based information about what's happening and what we can do. Uh -huh. So the Carbon Crew Initiative is a project which came out of that same group. And the, the founders were Dar Riley and Joe DiVincenzi and I think Susan Pfeiffer was involved. And they started this little initiative called Carbon Crew. Uh -huh. And I joined one of their Carbon Crews earlier this year. And I thought it was the neatest thing. Because basically what a Carbon Crew is, is it's a group of people getting together and providing answers to the question, what can we do? Both in practical terms and in terms of applying pressure where we can, uh, creating influence where we can. So that's what a carbon crew is. Uh, and the whole idea is that it's, it's a growth organization. So you start with a small group and then each of those people go off and set up their own groups. It's a good pyramid scheme. It's kind of a pyramid scheme. It works. No money involved. There's no money. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and um, you feel it's a, you're doing some good because you are. Um, and it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun for me. And one of the neatest things about it is that it immediately puts you in contact with people who are thinking the same way as you are. Yeah. People who are concerned and want to know what the heck they can do. Yeah. So How I did can, you first hear about it? Well, I heard about it through the Drawdown uh, Project. Did you go to see the movie when they ran it at uh, Southampton I, Arts? No, I, I, I the watched... The 2040 movie? I didn't, I've never actually watched the 2040 movie all oh, the way great. through. It's very well done. But I did watch a lot of the panel discussions in that festival mm -hmm. in the spring, and it was very impressive. Yeah, Gerald and I went. We met some great farmers and all the stuff they're doing. Yeah. It's a powerful yeah. organization. Yeah. I mean, it's come over from California, and now they have branches all over the place. But oh. they, I, I was extremely impressed. I thought, yeah, these are people I need to get to know. And so how does it all work? Okay. You can think of the Carbon Crew a little like a book club. It's uh, In a book club, you get a bunch of people together, and you drink wine, and you read the same book, and you talk about it, and you have a good laugh. And, it's... and you're on Zoom. Well, we... Does anyone so... ever have so much wine that suddenly they go like this? <laughs> So far, it's or been on sleep. Zoom. Now, uh -huh. I had so hoped that the, the crew I was running, I'm running now, we could do it in person. And Are they maybe I got, uh, they're all local. I have one, no, not quite a lot. I have one on the North Fork and another uh, one is actually currently in Toronto. <laughs> Toronto? Yeah. You're from Canada. I'm from Canada. Are you yeah. from Toronto? No. Oh. But anyway, you can, with Zoom, you can pull them in from anywhere. Sure. But it, it would be uh, it would be even more fun if we could do it around a dinner table. Yeah, you know. sure. But w how it works is we have a book which is, um, um, is now is that I see it says twenty forty. Right. Uh, but I think that's your camera. Okay, so this is Damon uh, Gamow's book twenty forty. Is he the guy that started the whole thing? No, it was, uh, Paul Hawken was the fellow who uh -huh. started uh, uh, Project Drawdown. And Damon Garmeau, yeah, he's a young Australian filmmaker, uh -huh. and he was so impressed by the Drawdown Project and what Paul Hawking was doing, that he said, we have to make a movie of this. So he made the movie 2040. Is and it on YouTube? That's a good question. Um, 
You should watch it if it is. I should know the answer there. Yeah. I should, yeah. Um, it's certainly widely available um, because we're trying to get it shown in the schools here. Wow. But the book is basically a distillation of the movie. And it's a template. It goes through the, the various aspects of our lives and it explains where the biggest effects are, mm -hmm. what the changes we can make, what the, what the changes we can make. They rank them in order, the things you can do that will actually make a shift in the way things are going. So that's our textbook for the, um, for the Carbon Crew. We have, um, it runs five weeks, about an hour and a half each session. Um, and we read. So wait, it runs five weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, do you meet every week? Do you meet every how week? Long? We for, do, yeah. For how long? About an hour and a half. Hour and a half once a week. Yeah. And then after five weeks, it's over. It's with the hope that each person starts a carbon crew. It's not not quite over because there's follow up. We try. We okay. keep. In, I mean, the whole idea is that if you work with a group of people, there's incentive to actually do the things that you're committing Don't to. Don't you miss each other? After yeah, we five do. Weeks. We do. And, so and why don't you keep it going? Why does it end in well, five we, weeks? I think socially we will keep it going. Okay. I mean, I'm making connections with all kinds of interesting okay. people. It's amazing, actually. Cool. So what happens is we read a couple of chapters. Uh -huh. uh, I forget what the first one is. It's like the obvious ones, like energy and transportation. Mm -hmm. And then during the week before the next um, session, you create your own personal climate action plan. Okay. So you list the things in your life, in energy and transportation, that you're doing right currently. You look at the things that you could change most easily, the sort of one-year things you could do. And then things... For instance, like a one-year thing you could do. If you take energy, um, maybe you... Cut back on the heat in your house a little bit in the winter. Turn the thermostat down, change all the bulbs to LEDs. Yeah, you know, all, all the kind of obvious stuff. Um, What's that stuff that you put around your windows? Weather stripping, yeah. Weather stripping? Yeah. So it's, it's all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, plus a whole bunch more that you probably haven't thought of, you know. Like? Uh, oh, no, you hit me. Um, one of the things that I did that I didn't know about, well, apparently... Um, uh, we're actually, talking about energy. In if particular. we're talking about energy, the area of energy, there are things like actually keeping your... If you run an electric stove, keeping the stove top, top clean makes a big difference, I, which I never knew. Apparently, you use more energy. It's, it's more efficient. The heat gets into the pan if the surface is clean. There are a whole bunch of stuff like that. You clean those coils? Well, now they're flat. I think we're talking about the, you know, the, the glass top ones like this. Yeah, they're flat now, yeah. I use an induction stove, and that is a huge improvement over gas. It's actually way faster than gas, too. Is it a countertop? or It's, your it's a countertop stove? with a conventional oven underneath, it's all, but it's all electric. So that would fall if you didn't have if you were if you're using a gas stove, mm -hmm. you might say, well, in my one year plan, I'm going to commit to changing from gas to electric. I'll Boy, and none of us like electric. We all want a gas stove. But it, that's because you change. that's because you haven't tried an induction stove, yeah. which is so fast. An induction stove. Mm -hmm. what, what, how does that work? It, it works on the, with the principle of magnetism. You can only use steel pots. <laughs> with a, an induction stove. Uh -huh. But once you've used one, you won't want to go back to gas. There's going to be a whole lot of inventions concerning magnets because that is energy that never stops and you don't have to do anything to get it. Yeah. Well, it's very efficient. Oh, yeah. And you're not, you're not, it doesn't have a, a carbon footprint. Magnetics you're, you're, is such an interesting study, really. Yeah. It's one, of those, it's one of those things like you know, when people say they don't believe in um, cosmic energy or God and because of you can't see it. And then you say, well, do you believe in gravity? Yes. Can you see it? No. Do you believe in magnetics? Yes. Electricity is like it? that, isn't no. it? Electricity. <laughs> but they have a, and God's just a word. We label something that we, yeah. you know, we don't know what to call this energy that we're all a part of. Right. But it's funny that they draw the line there. Yeah. But magnetics is so interesting. I still don't understand. Oh, there's, there's huge technological changes coming. And if you look yeah. at if you look at the um, the sort of long term plans, the obvious stuff you do is you make your own electricity. You put panels on the roof. Yeah. And you change from a, a gasoline car to an electric car. I mean, those, yeah, I mean, definitely. For most of us, those are sort of on the. If you're not already doing it, those are the sort of big things you can 
maybe plan to do in I five years. They put a little bit of a sound in electric cars so that animals can hear it coming. Oh yeah, they, they make a noise. Yeah, they do now? Okay, because in the beginning they didn't, yeah. But that's the concept. You know, in each of these areas you work out a plan and you study up on it with the help of the book and in discussion with other people and you learn what they're doing and what's out there and you develop a plan and you, you know, hopefully you will stick to it. So on your Zoom meetings, do people have to make commitments? Do they tell yeah, you? Yeah, you they're... you post your plan before the next meeting. You post it where? On our on our uh, on the email. We have a circular email. Okay. I mean, we're a group of I don't know half a dozen in this current group, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we all make our plan, and we post it a few days before or twenty four hours before the next session. We all look at it, so we've got something to talk about. And, you know, you share ideas and you, you, you work out what you can do. And how effective are you finding it for everyone? Well, there is no question that all these changes make a difference. But you say to yourself, well, yeah, but in the big picture, me making this change and that change, does it really have an effect? But the way you've got to look at it is that it's a little like saying, well, does my vote really count? Oh, yes. It counts when it's cumulative. So you have to scale it. You know, and that is the other side of the carbon crew concept, is that this is a growth machine. Mm -hmm. It's to change attitudes, you know, continually and build a sort of a, an awareness, a conversation, political pressure, you know. So if someone's watching this program today and they want to join your carbon crew, is there a number that you have to stop at or can anyone join it? Um, it, they, just like a book club, you can't have too big a crowd. Yeah. You know, you want it sort of... People uh, can fit on a Zoom call. Oh, you can have dozens on a Zoom call. But, uh -huh. you know, in order to have a conversation in an hour and a half session yeah. with everyone, you know, it, it's sort of uh, 8 to 12 is sort uh -huh. of the, is the ideal number, uh -huh. I think. If they want to, you know, if someone says, yeah, it sounds like something I should look at. Um, they can start their own. Carboncrew.org. Uh -huh. or just Google Carbon Crew Project, you will find it, the website, and you can get started right there. You can sign up as interested in joining a crew. Uh -huh. And you can also contact me direct. I've got a list of sign-ups, you know, for the next crew that I run. What do you think is the best thing about the whole idea? I think for a lot of us, sort of looking at the future and where we're going, and this week, of course, it's voting tomorrow. I wasn't thinking of that as oh, that's really important. But I was also thinking about the COP27 um, conference in um, Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt right now. Like, it's, oh, tell me about that. What's going on in Egypt right now? Well, this is this year's um, um, climate summit. In well, Egypt? It's in Egypt this year. Yeah, I mean, last year it was in Glasgow. Before that, it was Paris and it was Rio. Now it's in Egypt. And this is where we learn um, where we are in terms of the fight against climate change. And um, the news is not good. I mean, I was listening to um, the Secretary General of the UN this morning, um, Antonio Guterres, and he says, look, if we stay on this current track, we are doomed. We either act together or we commit suicide together. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, so if you're in that situation of being aware of what's going on and you have kids and you're worried about the future, you ask me what the best thing about this, this, this project is, I would say, well, it's the fact that you feel you're doing something, first of all. Yes. I mean, I don't want my kids looking back and saying, why didn't you do something? You knew it was coming. We've known for a long time. We've known for a very long time. And, and every time, like 30 years, Al Gore, poor Al Gore. I mean, even before Al Gore, they were like, oh, solar energy, it'll take 30 years before it's done, you know. But now it's 30 years later and they're just starting. And if they what, started then, we've had... We've, yeah, we've I mean, we are making headway. Game. We're making headway. There's no question about it. But as Guterres said today, he said, you know, we're not winning the race. we got to act a you lot faster. Giant icebergs breaking off and, uh, every minute. Right. So, you know, the best thing about doing something like this is, first of all, you feel you're doing something. Also, you're connecting with people with whom you can talk about it and find other ideas and ways to act. You, you can build in their strength in numbers. You know, the politicians do not act 
unless they feel there's a voting sure. block there. Yeah. It's the sad truth. They, I mean, they, they can't. They're, yeah. And if you look at the, you're talking about the election coming up tomorrow, what are the issues? Well, it's inflation, it's gun control, it's critical race. Theory, it's, and you ask yourself, all those are important issues, but they are as nothing to the fact that we're heating the world up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, burning uh, the Amazon down by miles all, every week. They think now, um, was, it, was it Paris or Glasgow where they, the, the science said, the International Panel on Climate Change, which is a multi-governmental panel which reports on the science and says this is what's happening. Yeah. They said we should keep it below one and a half degrees above pre-industrial levels. But aren't we already over that? We're blowing right through it. Yeah. The question is how high is it going to go? Uh. You know, now they're talking, well, you know, by the end of the century, we could be two or three degrees above that. And if that happens, the science is very clear. It's the oceans be, are cooked. It's going to be really hard for, um, it's now eight billion of us on this planet to survive. We yeah. don't know quite how it's going to play out, where the pressure points, but we can see it coming. Yeah, definitely. The ice is going. People are on the move. The whole Greenland and Iceland are right. all green. <laughs> Greenland's the, green now. Yeah. So the important thing wow. is to is to keep up a spirit of optimism and act. And and what can people do easily? And is there a website or something they connect to connect to to find out about all of this? Um, well, I would certainly the project drawdown. Mm -hmm. I think is terrific. Um, it's it's a purely science based. Um, initiative that it came out of California, Paul Hawken and a whole slew of international scientists got together to answer the question, what makes a difference here? What are the things that will, will change the level of carbon emissions? What are the things which will draw carbon out of the atmosphere? And it's laid out, it's all there. And if people want to learn about those things, they can go there. God, it seems so insurmountable when you see photos of factories and all the, and, and the war. For this planet has been at war mm -hmm. since the beginning of time, and all of the gunpowder and smoke and metal and garbage and stuff. Yeah, it's, um, it's just it's disgusting. easy to look at. Uh, it's easy to look at history and uh, think, well, it doesn't leave a lot of room for optimism. But um, we are extraordinarily adaptable, and capable the planet creatures. Is extraordinarily adaptable. Yeah, so I don't. The ocean um, can clean up itself. It's, I don't think there's, there's really any time or room for despair. We just have to act. Yeah. I mean, was it um, Jane Goodall says, you know, hoping for the best is not good enough. You've got to hope and you've got to act. You've got to do something. Yeah. yeah. So don't you, isn't there like a search engine or something that um, you were telling me about, Acacia? Oh, yeah. Um, little simple things you can do. Uh, yeah, I've switched my search engine to uh, Ecosia. Uh, Ecosia. Ecosia. E C O S I A. E C O Echo S I A. Ecosia. Yeah. And it's a search engine like it, Google. It's a search engine just like Google or Firefox or any of those. Um, and it works just as well as Google. It does. Yeah, it's only search. And you can areas. Google anything on Ecosia. Yep. It's just it's, yeah, it works just the same as any other. Is others. there an advantage for people to be using Ecosia? Does it is there an advantage to the planet or climate yeah. control? It's a it's a climate based search engine. So what happens is every time you do a search, you get you score points, and they plant oh, trees. I hate point things, but they I plant trees. Works. But anyway, you just use it. Uh huh. There are other simple things you can do. There's a there's a phone app called. Um, uh, climate Action Now, which is a political pressure tool. So they will, you'll get your phone, if, if you have the app, you will get messages all the time saying, hit this button and you're voting for this congressman who has this initiative or this. And button. then does it ask for money at the end? No, but no. what you're doing is you're signaling, you're sending political pressure messages. Good. As long as it's not asking for money at the end and you don't have to put in your email all the time and give them information. Once you sign up, you just hit yes. Yeah, yes. You're, what you're doing is you're I'm signaling. I'm in the fight. I'm in the fight. I'm in the fight. That's right. You're signaling to the um, congressmen the, and our senators. Yeah, who are, who are paying very close attention to what their electorate uh -huh. is thinking. You're signaling. You're just sending signals to them that, yeah, this is an issue I'm concerned about. Cool. And how many text messages do you get a day from this Group. What's the group called? It's called uh, Climate Action Now. Climate Action Now. Well, I have to confess, uh, Judy, that I don't actually have it because my phone is too old. 
I'm you gonna... know they're giving free phones. <laughs> you can trade your phone in. Giving free, and they're very easy, these new phones. But anyway, I, that's, that's one of the sort of simple issues. Because they're coming back. They look I, very cool now. I graduated from a flip phone only recently. Okay. And I, I got an iPhone 7, I think. Oh, and and, they, that, and that particular so app. But, you yeah, can't get it on a 7? It, I, I, apparently it won't work on my phone. But anyway, oh. if, you, if you're looking for but simple you things. You can trade that in so easily, the 7. <laughs> Yeah, call AT and T. I have the direct number for oh, yeah? AT and T loyalty. Yeah, are you on AT and T? I'm on AT and T. Yeah. I have the direct number for loyalty, and they will walk you right through it. Oh, okay. Then yeah. there's a hot you tip. It. You you see, got it. We both got something out of this morning's conversation. Well, yeah. Well, I think I got a lot out of it. <laughs> um, what surprised you the most about what you learned? A number of things. A number of things, um, because when. Uh, when Paul Hawken and his team went through the science, asking themselves the question, well, what are the most effective things? What are the most effective changes we could make? It's really interesting what comes out of that. Uh, it turns out that um, food is huge. Oh, so much waste. The way, the way we grow it in the first place, the way we waste it, uh, and the distance it travels, those sort of things. Mm -hmm. if, we could ch if everyone could change the way we think about food, make sure that it's grown regeneratively. If we could all shift to a, a lower meat diet, because meat, because of the... the, the, the I don't even want to eat animals anymore. It's well, so sad. In terms of I mean, climate... I never did, but less even now. In terms of climate, it's about the corn and soy, which is grown to feed the animals. Protein make, factory it's, in reverse. It's extremely uh, inefficient, and the yeah. growing of corn releases huge quantities methane. of carbon. And then there's the whole methane thing with the meat. Yeah. So, so so, the food thing is big. Like, it's it's one of the big. biggest things you can make. Big. Hey, cows eat, like, I forget now, there was a, a book out in the 60s called Diet for a Small Planet. Yeah. And it talked about how it was a protein factory in reverse. And cows eat like, you know, a thousand pounds of alfalfa to create one pound of beef. So many of these things we've known for a long time. And alfalfa takes so much water, and the whole West is on fire because they have no water. Yeah. And yet they have cattle, and they're growing alfalfa and, and almonds, which take an enormous amount of yeah. water. And, and they're all 80% for export. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, water is going to become a really big oh, deal. All over the world. So, yeah, I mean, that was a big surprise, how important what we eat and where it comes from is. Another big one that I, I wasn't aware of is the power of educating women and girls globally. Mm -hmm. That's a huge effect. It's interesting that this month, November 2022, sometime this month, we passed the 8 billion global population mark. No one knows quite where it's going to be, but this month we're actually going through that. Mm -hmm. And obviously, population pressure is a big factor in climate uh, and carbon emissions and the whole climate change thing. The most effective way that we can ease that pressure is by educating women and girls. I mean, not so much in this country, although it's obviously Everywhere, population is an yeah. issue here, um, but globally, yeah. yeah. And if you look at the numbers, it has a dramatic effect. Yeah. So that's a big one. And the women are really saying no to a lot of stuff now in Egypt and Iran and all over. They are. I mean, we're you know. And, we're, and we're, the young, the younger generation is saying no now too. Because they are. They're all connecting and they're realizing what's going on. Uh, it, yeah. That is a very encouraging. Uh, area of change that's going on. And if you ask yourself, what can I do if, I, if I'm concerned about that, there are all kinds of organizations that support the education of women and girls uh, that you can support. And would they, if you get on Ecosia, does it give you the... Uh, you will find those. Um, uh, you'll find them right here in... Uh, in 2040. In 2040. 2040. It's, yeah. it's all there. You'll find it in the writing of uh, Paul Hawken and his books, which are Drawdown and then Regenerate Generation, which is his second book. You'll find that information there. Um, so, yeah, those are things that, that will make a significant difference. Yeah. Are you optimistic about things going forward? That's a hard question. I have kids. I have to be optimistic. We have to be optimistic. We have to be part of the solution. I don't know, Judy. I really don't know. I, I mean, I look at the world. I look at this country this week. Am I optimistic? 
Oh, I hope there's a blue wave tomorrow. I hope it, it surprises everyone. I don't know, but... Um, because th those, those MAGA groups are quite small, really, in, in, in the eight billion, you know. I remember a quotation from um, um, a naturalist in British Columbia where I lived for many years, um, uh, uh, McTaggart Cowan was his name, I think. And he lived to 100. And he'd spent his life studying ecosystems in the rainforest of BC. And uh, on his 100th birthday, somebody said to him, um, so, what do you think? You know, are you optimistic about the future when you see what we're doing? And he said, um, I'm an optimist by intention, which is kind of the same thing as saying, well, you've really got to make an effort to be an optimist. Yes, he said, but he said, you know, intention. I'm an optimist by intention because you get more done and you have more fun. <laughs> Excellent. I thought, well, yeah, I'll buy that. You get more done, you have more fun, and you're meeting great people that you really yeah. like, and everyone's just wasting less food, which is really important. Yeah. Recycling. The connection with people is yeah. huge. Having their heat a little less in the winter, mm -hmm. yeah, and making their house energy efficient. Yeah. Everyone, um, look for this book, 2040, or watch the movie. I'm going to start using this browser, Ecosia. Ecosia. It's as good as uh, Google. Yeah. Why not? It's been so interesting speaking with you. This time has flown by. Very it's nice. Been fun, Judy. Paul Gart's side. And uh, people, start a carbon crew group. Yep. Right? Sign them up. Yes. And give yourself lots of room, ladies and gentlemen. Room for love, room for fun. Room to grow and room to glow. And you will glow more if you're eating. Oh, there's a vegetable. Um, you know about the vegetable misfits? There's yes, I do. Yes. Yes, an inexpensive way yeah. to get uh, great vegetables that don't get to the stores just because they're a little misshapen, but they're perfect. A lot. Get on that website too. Vegetable misfits, I think mm -hmm. it's called. Yep. Anyway, thank you for coming Thanks, and joining Judy. the ladies room. All right. And I'm going to check out Carbon Crew. Please do. All right. Okay, thank, thank you so much. Stop.